Hey guys, we're coming back to you with a brand new video. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at this. This is the Eminence F110M-8. It's a rather new uh, compression ring radiator driver. Now, I'm coming to you in my office, which I am obviously doing work on, as you can see in the back. Now, there is, this is a problem because someone put way too many thumbtacks in their wall. I have no idea why. This is just a good PSA not to use thumbtacks in walls. Also, don't pay attention to that. Instead, pay attention to this, because this is what you came here for. Now, this is the Eminence uh, F110M compression driver. It is a TPI driver, which basically means it uses a screw-on horn. If you don't have a screw-on horn, if yours is a bolt-on horn that you want to use, you can buy adapters. Eminence actually sells some adapters. You can screw these on and then bolt it on if you want to. Actually, you bolt it on the horn and then screw it in, but either way, it can work. It does have uh, your positive and negative terminals. They're in a rather unique spot in the essence that they go up towards the TPI screw. Now there's plenty of room here to be able to fit a crimp on terminal, at least in everything that I used it on. Uh, but if you did have issues with that, you might need to use a 90 crimp or of course solder them onto there. So let's go ahead and tell you a little bit about this. Now if you take a look at Parts Express website, one of the things that you'll notice about this is that this is really considered a budget compression horn driver. The price of it is right around $29.99, which is really inexpensive for a compression horn driver. Uh, in fact, I would consider that typically on one of the cheaper ends. Now, it is very efficient, which is really nice because you can really use this with just about anything. And, and the efficiency here in a second is going to really play a huge role in this. And let's go ahead and talk about that here in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at its specs. So this is a spec sheet from Eminence. Uh, as you can see, it's a screw-on 25 watt AES, which is plenty for most people, eight ohm. But here's where most people are gonna be upset about. But before we look at this response, let's talk about this. This is so nice. I love that Eminence does this. They do that driver volume displaced in there, which is obviously just a very, very small amount. But if you're trying to count up all your volume displacement, that's really cool that they do that. I love that they do this for you. All right, now let's look at this uh, frequency response curve. Um, this doesn't really look great. In fact, right now, the way that it looks like, now keep in mind, they, they do this in a horn, and I'm not sure what horn it's in. It doesn't say. But this is about 15 decibels down right here, which is about, I don't know, 15 kilohertz or so, maybe 14 kilohertz, is about 15 decibels down from up here. And uh, pretty sharp decline right after, I don't know, 7 kilohertz. Now, I have some measurements I'm going to show you. Of course, keep in mind that it depends on, on what horn you have it in, exactly how it's going to react with that. And you're going to see that with my measurements here in a second. But uh, this is not what I would consider a great measurement. Um, and most people would say that too. Now, the real question is, is it workable? And we're going to get to that. Right now, the way it sits, it looks like it would be really good for like a four-way system, at least whatever horn that this was in. So um, if you take a look at Klipsch, for example, they do cinema systems and they have four-way systems. What it consists of is a really giant woofer, uh, 18 or 15 inch, depending on you know which one you get. Then it does a mid-range, which covers a certain portion of the frequency range. And then it would cover another mid-range or mid-high range. That's where I think this one would be really good at. This would play somewhere between... I don't know, say 2,000 hertz to 6,000 hertz, pretty good. And then you'd cross it over to a final tweeter, which would then do the rest, you know, 6,000 to 20,000 or wherever you decide to cross those over at. But I think, you know, for a system like that, right off the bat, that's where this Eminence Ring Radiator is speaking to me at. Of course, once again, depends on what horn we put in. So let's go ahead and check it out in XM what exactly we have. So in XM, I have this... Um, run. This is a frequency response that I took in the Eminence Beta 10CX. So with the Eminence Beta 10CX, it actually drops off sooner, uh, about 3 kilohertz. And it's starting to go down and down and down. It's just, I got to be honest with you, it's just not an ideal response. A lot of people would say, you know, this is less than ideal. The real question though is, can you make it workable? Like, you have such a high end here. Is this workable? And if it is, is it going to cost a lot to make it work? I think that this can be 
really easily worked around. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. The first thing uh, that you're going to want to think about is the capacitor. Uh, the lower the capacitor, uh, the sooner you're going to start your crossover slope. And that's important to think about with this because we have, for all intents and purposes, this area right here that really everything after this, if we could pull this down, that would be a really good thing to be able to do. And that would flatten out the curve quite tremendously. So let's see if we can do that. First thing we're going to have to do is just go with a lower capacitor. So let's go with a smaller capacitor. We're going to continue going down, continue going down. And we're starting to look good. I think we could get a little better than that. So let's go a little bit more. A little bit further. There we go. Right about there looks good. Um, now we're back in this five decibel range. It's still not perfect, okay? But much, much better than what it was. We still have this high end that's just going off the charts. And we have another issue that we want to do too. This issue right here, if you take a look at it, we really want to get this further down as well. Let me just get rid of this phase curve so we can see more of what we're doing. This I would like to go down lower because we're most likely we're going to be crossing over between I don't know, 15 to 2,000 hertz, somewhere in that range. Probably 15 to 1,800 based off what the curve looks like right now. So we'll take this inductor. We'll flip it around. And let's go ahead and put a second order on there. That way we can protect this tweeter a little bit more and take down any of this distortion. As you can see, it already went down fairly significantly. I'd like to get it down a little bit um, lower. So let's see if I can do that. Yeah probably somewhere between 0.5 and 0.35 and now we have a really nice crossover point about two kilohertz and we're starting to protect the tweeter uh, fairly significantly which is great i mean everything is looking really good now minus this high end so let's talk about this high end first of all could we leave it the way it is absolutely i mean there, there's no reason why you could not leave this how it is right now um, it could be end up being a little bit brighter. Some people really like that. For those of you who like to put like super tweeters and stuff on there, that would be something that you might actually enjoy. But for the rest of us that want it flat, let's see if we can make it flat. In order to do this, we're going to have to do what we call a notch filter. So a notch filter uses a capacitor and an inductor and a resistor. Uh, the basic premise behind this would be uh, thinking of it as like a high pass and a low pass and then the resistor to tame it down or tune it down. So what we're gonna have to do is really work on the capacitor and inductor, get it to the frequency ranges that we want it to uh, really uh, f filter out. And, uh, and then once we get those filtered out, uh, once again, we'll be able to um, hopefully use that resistor to attenuate it to where we want it to be. Now because of this, we're gonna have to use small, okay? The, the further you're going down, once again, the larger the capacitor is going to be. The further up, the smaller it's going to be. So we know it's going to be under 1.5. So let's just start working there. And we'll go somewhere, I don't know, 0 0.75, 0 0.68. I actually have a bunch of 0.68s on hand, so let's, let's go there first. Um, and then we're going to start tuning the inductor. The inductor also is going to be very small. It's going to be way under that. So let's go ahead and start tuning this back down. Uh, that's starting to look good. As you can see, like everything's starting to kind of go out. So let's now tune this resistor. We've already uh, brought this down quite a bit. We haven't brought it down enough. So let's put this resistor up a little higher. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I probably wouldn't go over a 40, and I'll explain why in a second. Oops. Well, 403 would definitely be too big. Um, and we could tune this up maybe a little bit higher, something like, and yeah, 0.11 looks really good. All right, so now we've got a really workable response. Is it perfect? No. Is it good? Actually, it, it is. I've actually listened to uh, this one, and I have this set up. I actually have it set up as with a 0.13, which is like that. Uh, I didn't have any 0.11s on there, and the 0.1... Just, uh, I, I wasn't as big a fan on there. But let's kind of talk about this for a second because there is one thing that you might want to think about before uh, you commit to a crossover like this. First of all, the F110M is definitely workable. Uh, I hooked this up with the Beta 10CX 
Uh, just did a simple second order on the Beta 10 CX, and this is actually a relatively simple crossover on the F110M, and it sounds really, really good. Uh, it's a very mellow sounding. Um, there's a lot of tweeters that are bright, especially compression drivers. They're very bright. This I would not categorize in that at all. Um, in fact, it wasn't anywhere close to being bright. Now, having said that, um, some people won't like that because it is very mellow sounding. It sounds fantastic on things like jazz, um, uh, Michael Bublé, I really enjoyed listening to, Seal, uh, a couple other things. It sounds really, really fantastic on, really like it. I did hook this up to my receiver, and we're going to talk about why in a second. I uh, hooked it up as a center channel because center channels in home theater is are really intense they they handle a lot especially they pretty much handle all the dialogue and i was actually have been really impressed with it i have had no issues with it very crystal clear i've had no problems understanding anyone hearing anyone i've actually i i've listened to some scenes that i do typically have trouble hearing people and i haven't had any issues with that either so uh, overall i think that this type of crossover on this f110m in that eminence beta driver works and works pretty well there's one issue. If we look at the impedance graph, you're going to see the impedance dra uh, drops to almost 4 ohms. Um, that's because of this resistor, this high resistor. That's the reason why you wouldn't want to go any higher with this resistor as well. You could go lower with this resistor, like a 10, um, and then you're now at what is this, uh, 6.7. Once again, you're not really, what is this, uh, 14 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz? right around there, 14 and a half. So you could do that. I mean, you know, some people really like that airiness. And then you could consider your speaker a complete 8 ohm driver. Um, you know, really typically, you're not supposed to go, oh, is it 20% below whatever you rate it at. So if you rate it at 8 ohm, you're not really supposed to go past 6.4 ohms, you know, to consider it an 8 ohm driver. You know, but because of power dissipation, which we've talked about before, this really is not usually a problem this high in the frequency range for a receiver to handle or have any issues with. And it it hasn't. My receiver has not had any issues with it at all. But if you were concerned, you'd want to switch out that uh, resistor to something lower. So, you know, do I like it? What do I think about it? And I would say for $30, it's actually a pretty good driver. I think... The mid-range sound in it, especially like, well, from 2 to 5,000 hertz sounds really, really good. And I, I would consider probably doing like a four-way tower with these because I think they could be really, really good in that, that range right there. Um, there's really no distortion in them. I wasn't taking, I was when I was taking my distortion measurement, I wasn't getting any distortion in them. It sounded really good. Like I said, they're more of a mellow driver. So some people are going to really, really like that. But if you're more of the guy that really loves like clip sound that typically have like a brighter sound, I don't think you're going to like the ring radiators quite as much as someone else would. But if you're one of those people that says, hey, I really like the mellower sound, then I think this might be a driver that you could try out in the $30 range. It's a really inexpensive driver to give it a test. All the eminence drivers have been very consistent, which has been really good. What you'll notice, though, is because this ring radiator here it kind of sticks up, uh, this sticks back a lot further than a lot of compression drivers. And something I didn't account when I made my first box. In fact, I had to make two boxes because the first box, it didn't fit on there. It was a quarter inch too small. And so when you screw this on, there's quite a bit left over on there. And you want to think about that. So if your box is really small and you need a compression driver that doesn't stick out very far, that's something to keep in mind. Overall, though, um, I, think it's, I think it's a really fine tweeter for $30. I'm going to create, um, I, I'm working on some rear surrounds right now with this and the Eminence Beta 10CX. I am going to also try it with the JBL D220Ti. Um, and when I test it with that, I think uh, I'll get a better idea of which one I like better. And I'll probably, maybe I'll even do a side-by-side -side sound comparison if that's something you guys want. Uh, now, those are significantly more money. I mean, it's almost twice the price. They're $50 compared to $30. So you got to keep that in mind, too, when you're 
comparing these, you're not comparing apples to apples as far as price goes, and that's a fairly significant price increase. It's 40 bucks for a speaker without even taking into crossover into consideration yet. But I will go ahead and test it with that one as well, since I have some on hand and they are TPI. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and if you want to get instant content, make sure to ring that bell. Now, I do want to thank all my patrons. They have been fantastic uh, taking care of me, and I try to make sure that they get some behind-the-scenes footage of what I'm doing with the crossovers and things of that nature. So if that's something that you want to learn more of, consider becoming a patron, and, uh, and I'd love to see you guys on there. All right, guys, thanks, and have a great day.